Anyone who knows me knows I like to take late night walks a lot. A couple of times I encounter some strange people in the dark and some strange noises. The first time I actually was approached and followed. The second time I heard a hideous noise that sounded like rusted machinery and once again was followed. Well, I found out what the noise was. Apparently my town is infested with starlings. So the creepiest sound that I heard was nothing more than several hundred of these creatures. And I felt a little sheepish when I found that one out. Well, there's this unlighted street that cuts through the back of some houses in my neighborhood. There are no lights on there at all, unless they come from the back of a house. However, if you walk it at night, it's nearly pitch black. I don't usually walk it at night, but I often take the road during the day. And there's a Siberian Husky, locked in a small cage, that normally barks once at me when I pass by. Well, I'm not afraid of much, but I have never gotten the nerve to walk down there in the middle of the night. That is, until a couple of days ago. I felt like I needed a rush of some sort, and when I came upon the road, I was like, oh, what the hell? And I went. I walked very slowly and my eyes were darting in every direction. I was very nervous, but enjoying it too. And then suddenly at the end of the road, I heard this horribly loud noise right beside me and I jumped out of my skin. How I felt my pulse increase. And that was when I remembered about that adorable Siberian Husky caged in the backyard of a house. And he always barks one time. And that time terrified me. But I thanked him for the scare. I turned around though. The dog wasn't there. The dog hasn't been there since. And I assume it passed away. Because the cruel owners felt it was better to leave the poor thing in the heat in a small cage than take care of it. But I heard that bark. And no one can tell me different. It's been weeks now and I have never seen the dog again. And he was not there when I heard the bark. First off, I don't necessarily describe myself as a believer or a skeptic in the paranormal, but I want to believe there is something there. It makes life more interesting that way. But I also don't see every little unexplained incident as proof of paranormal activity. The setting. A row of four townhouses all connected by a common wall. Fairly close proximity to an old cemetery, but that's the only connection to any sort of death. They are all fairly new and I was the first owner of the place, so there was no residual energy from previous occupants. I talked and was friendly with all of the neighbors. And after living there a while, every single other person who lived in those units recounted to me, unprompted and individually, their concerns of their place being haunted. I'll include some of my personal stories, my wife's, and my neighbor's stories to the best of my memory. This was several years ago. First weird occurrence. Sometime in the middle of the night, I don't recall exactly when, I am awoken by my somewhat protective dog growling and staring out into the hallway. I sleep with my bedroom door open because, in the event of an intruder, I want my dog to be able to get to the person before that person makes it all the way to my bedroom. So my dog then tears ass out of the room, as if he's going to rip someone or something a new one. A few moments pass and he rounds the corner back into the bedroom with his tail tucked, and he's running as if the devil himself were hot on his heels. He leaps into the bed and turns around facing the doorway and is visibly shaking. He is shaking so hard the whole queen-sized bed is shaking. His hair is standing up in a line down his back from his neck to his tail, and there is a low whimper coming from him. I tend to trust animal instincts because I know they can smell, hear, see, and sense things that us humans cannot. I strain to listen for any intruder in the house and hear nothing. These townhomes were constructed cheaply enough that if there's a person moving around you can hear it. The dog never relaxes for the remainder of the night and continues staring out into the hallway. I never relax either. I laid there for hours and heard and saw nothing. But the dog seemed to sense something, 
and occasionally growled while staring at what is only an empty hallway to me. I did not sleep that whole night, and my dog continued this behavior until almost dawn. I've met some dogs that bark and growl at everything, but my dog is not one of them. I only heard him growl once before this incident, and only twice since. I ended up going away for that weekend. I was gone from Friday after work until Sunday. No one was in my unit. No one else has keys to my unit. When I get home on Sunday, I see my neighbor to the north of me in his garage, so I stop to chat with him. He says, you sure got home late last night, to which I reply that I was out of town almost 100 miles away both Friday and Saturday. He then asks if I left my dog home. My dog was with me. He then goes on to explain that around 2.30 a.m., there was someone running up and down my stairs. The units are mirror copies of each other, so my stairway leading upstairs shares a wall with his stairway. They were insulated well enough that you don't hear someone walking down the stairs in the adjoined unit, but if someone runs or drags something heavy, you can hear it and feel it. Both he and his wife heard it and assumed my dog was excited about something and was running up and down the stairs repeatedly for 45 minutes. No one was there for almost two days. This talk prompted him to relay the story that his wife shared with him, but he doesn't remember. His wife awoke one night to find him standing at the top of the stairs around 2.30 a.m. He was pointing down to the landing. His wife asked him what he's doing. She said he just pointed and said, Tell him to leave me alone. She asked, who are you talking about? And his response was, That little boy right there. He's staring at me. Tell him to leave. The man had no recollection of this, but his wife sure did. The neighbor to the south of me told me one time in casual conversation when I asked why I hadn't seen his girlfriend in a while, that she didn't like coming over because when she stays the night, she hears an old man whispering in her ear when she's trying to fall asleep. Now my girlfriend had a strange one as well. She had just recently moved in with me and I was out of town for some reason or another, so it was just her home alone. It was winter and there was fresh snow falling. This plays a part in the story. She was woken up by a pounding on the door once again around 2.30 a.m. She peered out of the bedroom window. It was on the top level but provided a good view down to the front door. No one there. No foot tracks in the fresh snow. She tried to go back to sleep, but the pounding persisted intermittently. She thought maybe someone was drunk or high and lost, and maybe they were pounding on the back door. That was entirely plausible as this was a whole community of 200 units of townhomes that all looked pretty much exactly the same. So she cautiously crept downstairs and tried peeking through the side window to see if anyone was on the back deck. No one there. So she went to the back door and flipped on the light. No one there. There were also no tracks in the fresh snow, no tracks to the neighbors, no tracks in the backyards, no sign of anyone moving anywhere through the fresh snow. She turned off the light, double-checked the locks, turned around to go back upstairs, and boom, boom, boom. The pounding started again on the back door where she had just been standing. She said she ran upstairs as fast as she could and jumped into bed. She then made a request of her father, whom had passed away only a few months before this. She said, Dad, if you're out there, please, please make whatever this is go away. I am really scared. And she said the pounding stopped immediately, and then it felt as if a curtain of calm and peace suddenly enveloped her. The next morning, there were still no tracks anywhere in the snow. After chatting with people that lived in that community, it seemed that ghost stories were fairly common. It became a running joke with the neighbors. Like any time something went missing, an appliance broke, or something got moved from one part of the house to the other with no explanation, we simply said to one another, it's those damn ghosts again. I moved out of there over two years ago, and have had no unexplained happenings since, so whatever it was seems to be located there, and isn't connected to me. And this is a story that has baffled me for a very long time. I am a skeptic. I have been a skeptic. And I will always be a skeptic. I actually do have what I consider to be an explanation for this. But not sure everyone will agree. You know, 
Waverly Hill Sanatorium? It was a tuberculosis hospital that was closed decades and decades ago. Right now, they do ghost tours. And with some friends, I decided to go to the ghost tour. Of course, I didn't expect to see anything other than trickery, but I still thought it might be fun. All I can tell you about the tour is that the people there really do their work. They carry around these devices that pick up on names and stuff. It was weird, because my friend signed the guest book, and the device was able to pick up her name. I didn't sign the guest book, and the device didn't know who I was. So, that only helped my skepticism. There is the device that ghost hunters use, called a ghost box, that supposedly picks up the voices of ghosts. One of the people on the tour tried to get everyone to be quiet while he turned his box on. His goal was to get the children to sing Ring Around the Rosies. I spent the entire thing internally laughing my ass off. That rhyme was not popular in the United States around the time those kids in the hospital would have passed away. Now, I can only admit to one thing, and one thing only. After about five hours of the tour, I was getting really bored, and my group was walking down the hall, and suddenly, I saw two people in front of me appear to be hit by something. At that moment, I stumbled as something hit me hard and knocked me into the other room. I didn't see anything. I didn't see anything there at all, but something hit me. Several people, eager to claim a supernatural experience, came into the room to see how I was doing. And that was when I was told that others felt it too. But whatever it was, it knocked me completely into another room. I don't believe in ghosts. I don't think it was a ghost. Personally. I think it was the power of suggestion. I saw two other people look like they were getting hit by something, and naturally my mind thought I got hit too. I don't know. I mean, there is a possibility I might be wrong. But I wanted to share the story, let people draw their own conclusions. About four or five years ago, I saw this thing in my basement. I say thing because to this day I'm not really sure what it could have been. I just know that it wasn't anything shy of paranormal. To preface the story, growing up my dad was a raging alcoholic. Every day he would come home from work, drink an eight pack of Bud Light all by himself, and then go into the basement and drink nips. His relationship with my mother and I was poor. They would constantly fight. And as the years passed, he spent less and less time with us. Until, just a year before this story, he had flown several states back home to California, where he still is today. I'm 17 years old now, so I think I was 12 or 13 when this happened. I had gone down into the basement to take care of my rabbit. It was just my mother and I who lived in the house, and we had a lot of pets. We had to keep my rabbit in the basement for a short while as I had been fixing up my bedroom and didn't have room for his cage. I knelt down in front of him and was giving him attention, when all of a sudden I became aware of something else in the room. My rabbit noticed too, and backed up to the far corner of his cage. Before continuing further, I'll explain the layout of my basement as best I can. It's your classic eerie, damp, and dark basement, which without question had made this experience all the more horrifying for me at the time. The stairs go down and in front of you is the washer and dryer. You turn left to the rest of the room, shaped like a square. My rabbit cage to the right, a couch against the middle of the wall, coffee table in front of it, and then to the far left, a door frame leading to the other side of the basement where my dad's room had been. A light bulb hung from the ceiling in the middle, right over the couch. As I felt a shift in the atmosphere, I quickly turned to see what the source could have been and I felt my heart sink. In the doorframe leading to the other side of the basement, this dark shadow of a tall, stocky man had moved into view. And when I say moved into view, I mean just as I looked up, it seemed to come around the corner, before settling in the doorway. 
It had no details, and all I saw was a silhouette, but from that I was sure it was a man. It looked far too much like the silhouette of my father, but at the time, and even now, my father is very much alive. It couldn't have been his ghost. At first I was completely frozen. I knew in an instant it was something otherworldly. And though I had always enjoyed the idea of paranormal activity, I knew whatever this was, it meant no good, and I was almost sure I was in danger. A few seconds passed, and then adrenaline kicked in, though I told myself it was best if I stayed calm and showed as little fear as I could manage. I closed the rabbit cage and stood up, all while watching this thing. I'd realized that unfortunately I'd set my phone on the coffee table, and I dumbly decided that I wouldn't leave without it. I walked towards that thing, calmly, but each step I took, my heart lodged itself in my throat. I grabbed my phone, and with that, flight mode kicked in, and I could no longer maintain a calm facade. I turned and sprinted up the stairs, locking the basement door behind me, and ended up hyperventilating on my couch for several minutes. Whatever it was, it stayed in the basement, and even though I didn't watch it as I ran up the stairs, I knew it was behind me. It felt almost predatory. For several weeks, I had analyzed the experience as best as I could, seeing what I could rule out. The first thing I ruled out was it being an intruder, because the last time I checked, no matter how creepy some guys can be, they could not be shadowy and translucent. The next thing I ruled out was it being my own shadow. I'd wondered for a while if I'd managed to scare myself thinking my shadow was something else in some brief moment of anxiety, but it was all wrong. As I knelt in front of my cage, that thing was standing, and it didn't move when I stood up and walked towards it. The second part that confirmed it was not my shadow was the location of the light bulb, the only light source in the whole basement, and it was right between that thing and myself. My shadow had been in the exact opposite direction. Over the years of telling people the story, some have told me that the negative energy in my basement, my house overall really, attracted something evil which honestly wouldn't be too big of a surprise. Some people have said it might have been a shadow figure, but my knowledge on what those are is not very extensive. Whatever it was, though, I knew it had to be connected to my father. It just looked too much like him to me. What do you guys think it could have been? Hey guys and ladies, thanks for watching. I want to thank Killer Orange Cat for working with me again. That dude has been my buddy since I started doing this. And he was a guy I listened to before I started. So if you've never checked any of his stuff out, go check him out. And how'd you guys like that intro flip? That was Killer Orange Cat's intro, If I Did It. And on his channel will be my intro, If He Did It. So we, we thought that would be a pretty cool idea. I'm not sure, but I don't think anyone's done that. So make sure to go check out the other half of this collab on his channel. I will have a link to his channel in the description. Also, my shirts, Patreon, Instagram, and Twitter are, will be down there too. And uh, that's about it. So be good to animals, even people. Sip.